Hey guys, what's going on? I wanted to bring you back to another edition of the scales and tails inside of our reptile room. So I just cleaned this entire place up. Haley went on a fossil hunting expedition. My ankle's busted. I really don't think it's a good idea, nor do I feel like going and hiking. Uh, so I just stayed home today. Been doing some chores around the house and uh, the biggest chore of all is cleaning your reptile room. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys out there are like me and that, let's face it, you don't always want to clean. Sometimes you get done at the end of the day or you get started in the beginning of the day and the last thing you want to do is like, oh my God, I got to clean up. Well, the fact of the matter is that when you have a bunch of these animals and you're responsible for their well-being, the number one thing you have to keep up with is the cleaning. A clean enclosure is going to prevent things like mites, too much moisture or not enough moisture. You know, you can get animals with respiratory infections. If your snakes go to the bathroom and they sit in their own mess, uh, things like scale rot can happen. You're going to get a lot of ammonia building up in the air. Uh, it's just not nice. I'm sure. A couple of you, if not a lot of you, have been to a pet store every once in a while and you think, God, this place smells like a barn. And uh, it's not really like enjoyable. And then you see the animals and they're dirty. Um, maybe they're sick, malnourished, things like that. So maintaining a clean atmosphere for your animals is going to make your life a lot easier. Not only is it going to uh, keep a healthy inventory for you, but it smells better. You come home, you don't have to deal with like the smell of rats, the smell of snake poop. Um, all those things that we've dealt with at time to time in the past. So it's important to maintain sanitary conditions for the animals. You wouldn't want to live in a dirty house and I'm sure your animals don't either. So over here is what was originally a rack for tanks and stuff, but because of the way it was built and I kind of got it out of the trash, it's missing some pieces, it just served better as a utility rack. Now you don't have to orchestrate your room the same way like a hospital or a doctor's office would be set up. It is nice when things are kind of in their place and that way you know where they are and they're easier to find, but at the same time you don't have to go crazy over the organization. Uh, one of the things I like to do is just lump parts of a room into categories. So like for example here we've got all the rats on one side and all the reptiles on the other. That's just a simple divide. In addition to that I put most of the cleaning supplies and the backup supplies over here in the corner. You've got things like reptile cage cleaner, um, spray bottles. This is some Windex just for the windows here because you know, you're going to have dust and dander in the air so you, I like to keep everything clean. Um, and then there's a lot of little leftover supplies. This was a smaller cage for one of the juveniles that we had before. We recently upgraded two of them to larger 28 quart containers. So you know, in the future when I've got other hatchlings coming out, I can just recycle the old materials. Whenever we do business with someone and we send out an animal or we receive an animal, it's always good to kind of keep track of your packing. A buddy of mine gave me this drawer system. You can get things like this at Target, Home Depot, Walmart, really maybe even CVS or something like that. In here I've got things like my light bulbs, tweezers, different types of substrate, there's perlite, vermiculite, sharpies, labels, tape, string, smaller heating elements. Sometimes you have to MacGyver things. It's always good to know where your supplies are uh, just so you can put stuff together. As I had mentioned in one of my other videos, we had gotten a rack from another friend of mine and he had bought it from a guy before him. Uh, he had designed those shelves to be very long so they held these big containers. These are like 64 quart containers. They're massive. Um, they're, they're good if I guess you're going to pair ball pythons. Uh, they make good breeding tubs or if you have larger snakes and once you move up in your boa constrictors, um, reticulated pythons, things like that. But for our purpose, I wouldn't put juveniles in there. It's just, it's too much space, but you know, I'm not going to throw out a perfectly good tub. So I kind of keep these down here in storage just in case. They're also excellent for when you do rat cage cleanings. Um, I'll take all my adult rats and I'll put them in two or three and just kind of put them in the corner. That way they've got space and they won't get away and that way I can manage the cleaning of their enclosure. Over here we've got Repti Bark, Spragum Moss. Uh, this is just a spare 10 gallon tank I've got sitting around. Sometimes I'll take all the rats when they're getting ready to be weaned off of their mothers and I'll put them in here. That way I can clean out the rack system. Um, and of course in the case where you need to separate your animals just for a period of time, it's always good to have a couple spare tanks just as a holding bay. So there's a lot of products out there on the market that people advertise for taking care of reptiles and in our case mainly snakes. There's a lack of education. Really it's super simple. Put yourself in the situation of the animal. If you cut your foot, what are you going to do? 
you probably should try and disinfect it, clean the area, and maybe wrap it to some degree. Now in the case of your reptiles, it may not be the coolest or easiest thing to try and put a bandage on a snake. In fact, it's probably just not gonna work and I wouldn't recommend it. I wanted to show you guys a couple examples of things that we use in our room that I know have been proven to work. And I've also talked to other breeders who are a lot more experienced than I am and asked them their opinion on some of these items as well. Hand sanitizer. I can't stress this stuff enough. This is an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. It's pretty simple. If you're gonna handle your animals, you should always put this on beforehand, especially when you're dealing with rodents. So many times I've heard about people getting bit by their snakes, and usually it involves around the time of feeding. So if you smell like their prey item, mind you, these snakes don't have the best vision. So now you're gonna put a warm object into their enclosure that smells like a rat, you're probably gonna get bit. In addition to that, you never know what's on your hands. We travel all over the place. It's always important to just lather up with two or three pumps of hand sanitizer. I usually go directly in the hands, all across, in between the fingers, and I'll even go up my arms. And some people might think, well, gosh, that sure is a lot of hand sanitizer, but if you're at a show, you're gonna be handling on someone else's snakes, they could have mites. You could have something on your hands that aren't necessarily good for the animal. So this is just a good preventative barrier in between yourself and the animals. I've got two separate different containers here of natural chemistry. Um, these are two different types of cage cleaners. They both more or less have the same active ingredients. These are just different labels for the two bottles. These contain enzymes suspended in a liquid matrix. And when you spray it into the enclosure after you've already probably done a a primary wipe down and you've removed a lot of the materials, hard substrates, uh, decor from the cages, it starts to break down the organic material and it doesn't produce a radical smell. Uh, I usually spray it in the cage, I'll let it sit for five minutes and then I'll put a little bit of warm water in there, slosh it around, get a brush, sponge, maybe some towels and do a wipe and then a final rinse at the end. This stuff is really good to use as a cleaning agent. Now here's another one that some people have been on the fence about. I don't understand why, um, just coming from my experience, this has been a lifesaver. Any brand of Listerine, this is really, I guess if you wanted to be specific, it's an antiseptic mouthwash. Um, mind you, go with the brown. No dyes, no flavorings. This is just your regular antiseptic mouthwash. Now I will dilute this in a mixture, about 30% of the mouthwash and then the rest of it in warm water. A Q-tip and Neosporin. If you get a cut, you probably want some antibacterial ointment to go in there. Sanitizing the container, sanitizing the animal, disinfecting any wounds, cuts, or sores, and then applying an antibacterial ointment has shown to me an incredible difference. Uh, we had a pastel yellow belly that we got from an individual. He said he bought it from a Petco. The snake was trying to thermoregulate and she in fact got a really bad burn on her body. In fact, here's Sophie. This is the pastel yellow belly that we rescued or I should say adopted from this gentleman. Um, she was pretty small when we got her and she's grown a tremendous amount in a year. Let's see if we can get this application on her tail here for you guys. Now as you can see here along the belly, there's a slight pink discoloration and some of the scales, and that travels through all the way down to the tail here. That entire section of her body was really badly burned. So we cleaned her best we could, and then I applied ointment to the burn. We did that for three days, a good strong lather of antibacterial ointment, in this case Neosporin, along the belly of the animal. On the third day she shed, and I have to say, what was almost like 80% of the damaged tissue left with the shed, and she had a real nice, soft, uh, healthy pink glow on a lot of the scales. Now, reptiles, since they do have scales, it takes a long time for any wounds to heal, and in most cases, over the, the lifetime of that creature, they'll have a scar or something to bear resemblance to it. But in the time that we've been treating her for her burn since then, I gotta say, unless you're here in person and you really look closely at her belly scales, there's not a whole lot of evidence that she was ever burned in the first place. 
Uh, she's got an incredibly good appetite. There was no infection. As far as I'm concerned, I would hope that she wasn't in any tremendous amount of pain. Obviously, snakes can't speak, but I would like to think that the, the care and the love that we give to them is everything that they would need to recover in an appropriate time. Pastel yellow belly. She's got a pretty wicked cool pattern going down her back. Super psychedelic. I mean, look at that. Wow. That's crazy, man. I haven't weighed her uh, in a couple months. I've just kind of been letting some of our females, you know, eat, uh, especially the ones that aren't ready for breeding season. Um, I'm not too concerned about how quickly they put on weight. The important thing is that an animal is healthy based on the years they've been alive. The rule of thumb is that a female should be able to reproduce at three years and 1,700 grams. Obviously older, more mature snakes are gonna have uh, a better, more de well-developed reproductive system. Once they lay that clutch, they lose a lot of weight. So it'd be better to have a snake with weight put on it in the beginning. So that way when they come out of laying the deposit of the clutch, um, it's not too strenuous on the animal and hopefully they have enough strength once you clean them off, you can get them back on feed right away. There's always gonna be a debate on what's right and what's wrong. I'm not here to tell anybody that if you're doing something different than what I've suggested today, that it's not the right thing to do. If it works for you and your collection, please continue to do what you've done. Um, I'm just trying to learn as much as the next person. And I know some people struggle out there uh, trying to figure out what do I do? And it can be nerve wracking. It's just like any other kind of responsibility. If you have a kid, you buy a dog, you adopt a new pet, there's a lot of questions that come along with it. And sometimes the best way to get answers is just talk to another experienced individual. I try to stick with cleaning agents that have as few ingredients as possible, especially if I have a better idea of what the hell they are, or at least I can pronounce them. Um, like I said, the hand sanitizer, 70% ethyl alcohol, single ingredient. That's all it does. Alcohol, it will break down bacteria, um, it helps eliminate odors, so that's always a good one. Antiseptic mouthwash. It's got menthol, eucalypto, methylene sanitite, and thymol. There's four ingredients in there. I know two of them are a cleaning agent for disinfectants. Um, menthol smells really good. I'm pretty sure that has antiseptic properties as well, if I remember correctly, uh, back in my days in massage therapy, learning about Chinese medicine. The Healthy Habitat Enzyme-Based Cleaner. Water and naturally-based enzymes. Enzymes are basically a biological catalyst that help accelerate reactions in nature. In this case, you're spraying it directly on what would be fecal matter or urates, and it's gonna immediately start to separate and break down those components. With a little bit of water in there, it makes it really easy to clean off, so that's something I highly recommend. And Neosporin's nothing crazy either. I recommend it. I've used it on myself and I've used it on my animals. Not just my reptiles, but my rodents. I feel like the Q-tip's probably self-explanatory. This is really an applicator. You can use it to clean and disinfect an area. Uh, you can use a dry swab to absorb liquid. So if you did have uh, a very messy cut or something that was bleeding, maybe even like a pustule infection, you could absorb some of the liquid with this. Um, they're just good little tools. You know, your fingers might be delicate to a degree, but this is a much smaller application tip. So it kind of helps as a, a tool in whatever you're doing. Um, so I recommend these. They're sterile, they're cheap, and uh, they're easy to use. So at the end of the day, it's really just about keeping your space clean. You want to take care of your animals the same way you'd want to be treated and taken care of in the first place. Keep their enclosures sanitary. Always research the ingredient-based items that you're going to be using to clean with. Keep a backup supply of things you may need, and always ask for help. Anyway, it's been great talking with you guys today. My name's Avery Crawford, and this is the Avery Crawford official YouTube channel. If you have any questions, feel free to message me here. You can also reach me on Facebook and Instagram. Our page is Balls of Love. That's all one word with a period separating each one. Same goes for Facebook, and you can find me on my personal Facebook page at Michael Avery Crawford. It's been awesome. And I hope you guys learned something. Till next time, take it easy.